Church, it's going to be a reality very soon. Amen. I, I don't think we could really imagine how close this coming is. Praise God. Praise God. I, I realize every day that that I get up and I listen to the news and I see what's going on across the world that the Word of God is being fulfilled Amen. at such a rapid pace. We're, we're, we're headed headlong Amen. to the coming of the Lord. Praise God. Praise God. Prophecy being fulfilled. That's why somebody said and I know, and you've heard me say it before, that no man knows the day nor the hour. That's true. Amen. But I tell you, the Bible said, if the same Spirit that raised Jesus Christ from the dead dwell in you, Thank he shall you also Jesus. quicken, and that word quicken yes, means make alive Lord, your Lord. mortal body. If I'm alive, I'm aware. Amen. He said, watch and pray always, and that day don't come upon you unaware. Amen. So I don't know. But the spirit inside of me knows. Yes, sir. God is a spirit. Yes, sir. And if the spirit of God dwells in you. Then the spirit inside of you knows. So what happens? As the closer we get to the coming of the Lord, the closer we get to that day, something inside of my spirit says, boy, you get ready. It's about to come. Yes, it's about to happen. Thank, it's about you to Jesus. Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. So that spirit inside of me makes me aware mm -hmm. of the time we're living in. Amen. That he's about to come. Mm -hmm. That trumpet's about to sound. We're going to leave here. Praise God. That's not my message. That's just my first message. All right. <laughs> Praise God. Praise God. St. Luke's Gospel, the seventh chapter. We'll begin reading at verse 36. One of the Pharisees desired him that he would eat with him. And he went into the Pharisee's house and sat down to meet. And behold, a woman in the city, which was a sinner, when she knew that Jesus sat at meat in the Pharisee's house, brought an alabaster box of ointment, and stood at his feet behind him weeping, and began to wash his feet with tears, and did wipe them with the hairs of her head, and kissed his feet, and anointed them with the ointment. Now when the Pharisee, which had been him, saw it, he spake within himself, saying, This man, if he were a prophet, would have known who and what manner of woman this was that touches him, for she's a sinner. And Jesus answered and said unto him, Simon, I have somewhat to say unto thee. And he saith, Master, say on. And there was a certain creditor which had two debtors, the one owed 500 pence and the other 50. And when they had nothing to pay, he frankly forgave them both. Tell me, therefore, which of them will love him most? And Simon answered and said, I suppose that he to whom he forgave most, and he said unto him, Thou hast rightly judged. Mm -hmm. And he turned to the woman and said unto Simon, Seest thou this woman? I entered into thy house. Thou gavest me no water for my feet, but she has washed my feet with tears and wiped them with the hairs of her head. Thou gavest me no kiss, but this woman since the time I came in hath not ceased to kiss my feet. My head with oil thou did not anoint, but this woman hath anointed my feet with ointment. Wherefore I say unto thee, her sins, which are many, are forgiven. For she loved much. To whom little is forgiven, the same loveth little. And he said unto her, thy sins are forgiven. 
And they that sat at me with him began to say within themselves, Who is this that forgiveth sins also? And he said to the woman, Thy faith hath saved thee. Go in peace. Praise God. Let's praise Him one more time. God, we love You. God, we praise You. God, we thank You for Your Word. We thank You for Your Spirit. God, the Lord, that use us for Thy glory, anoint hearts and ears to receive Your Word today. We'll praise You in Jesus' name. Praise God. And you may be seated. And of course, many of you know the story of the woman with the alabaster box of ointment. The Bible said that Jesus went to the Pharisee's house to eat with the Pharisee. A man by the name of Simon, if you read the other accounts of this story in the other Gospels, it's very possible. He calls him Simon in verse 40. In the other accounts, he says Simon the leper. So this was probably a man that God had healed of his leprosy. You find also, if, if you kind of study and look at it, it's very possible that this, this was the house they were in and having a meal in that where Lazarus was also that had been raised from the dead. And people came to see Lazarus after that he'd been raised from the dead. Uh, and, and, and if you look at it in the book of John and, uh, when it talks about this but as this woman came in she began to stand behind Jesus and began to weep and then she began to wash his feet with her tears and wipe them with the hairs of her head and then she kissed his feet and then opened up that alabaster box of ointment and began to anoint him. Mm -hmm. If you read in the other Gospels, you find that uh, Jesus told his disciples, he said, you know, they were, some of them were kind of upset at what was going on, and he said, he said, wherever, she said, he said, she's done this toward my burial, and wherever this Gospel is preached, you tell what this woman has done for a memorial for her. But we look as, as uh, Simon was saying within himself that if Jesus were a true prophet, he would have known what manner of woman this was that was touching him. And Jesus perceiving what he had thought or what he was thinking said, uh, Simon, and again, you've got to think, Simon was, had probably been healed of leprosy if you go back to the other gospel. And it's very possible that, that this was the same house that, that Lazarus was in that had been raised from the dead. And here you've got this Pharisee that, that had probably been healed of leprosy questioning where Jesus was a prophet or not. He said, well, if, she, if, he, if he was a true prophet, he would have known what manner of woman this was. And Jesus said, uh, Simon, I've got somewhat to say to you. And he said, well, say on. And then he told the parable or the story about the, the, the two creditors, one owed 500 and the other 50, and the creditor uh, forgave both of them. He said, now, who do you suppose uh, would love him the most? And he said, well... The one that he forgave the most. Yep, sir. And he said, you, you've rightly judged. And then he went on to tell him, he said, he turned to the woman, he said to Simon, he said, uh, you see this woman? Yeah. He said, I entered into the house. And he said, you gave me no water for my feet. He said, this woman, since she came in, has continually washed my feet with her tears and wiped them with her hair. He said, when I came in, you gave me no kiss. But this woman has not ceased to kiss my feet since she came in. He said, when I came in, my head, you didn't anoint with oil. But since I came in, 
She's anointed my feet with oil. And he said, he looked at her and he said, Woman, your sins be forgiven you because you love much. Mm -hmm. You love much. She hadn't been healed of leprosy. She hadn't been raised from the dead. But there was a love in her heart for Jesus. Amen. And because of that love in her heart for Jesus, she began to do these things. She began to worship Him. The time of my message this morning is since Jesus came into the house. Amen. Since you've entered these doors this morning, since Jesus came into the... Somebody said, now you know He's here. I felt His presence. Right. You felt His presence. Some of you have already lifted your hands and worshipped and praised Him because you felt His presence. But to some of you, I say, since Jesus came into the house, what have you done for Him? Huh? Since Jesus came into the house today, what have you done for Him? So many times, many times we come to the house of God and I know we need to, we need to come when we've got needs, we need to come to Jesus. But so many times our focus is on what Jesus can do for me. Or what He can do for me today. But what if we turn that around? Jesus said, since I came into the house, she hasn't ceased. At my feet. Crying. Worship, kissing my feet, anointing my feet. She hasn't ceased. Simon, what have you done? Mm -hmm. Basically, he said, Simon, you, you didn't give me water for my feet. You didn't give me a kiss. You didn't anoint me. What have you done since I came in the house? Look what this woman's done. Look what this woman's done. What have you done since Jesus came into the house today? Amen. What have you done for Jesus since He came? You know, sometimes, sometimes, sometimes we need to come into the house just to bless the Lord. Amen. Just to worship Him. Just come in and give something back to God for all His blessings He's given us. Yes, sir. Thank you, Jesus. You would think a, a leper that had been cleansed of leprosy right. would have been falling at Jesus' feet and said, Master, what more can I do for you? But yet, he got upset because this woman was doing everything he hadn't done. Right. Mm -hmm. Bless him, Lord. Huh? He was upset because she was doing everything he hadn't done. He said, Simon, I've got somewhat to say to you. And because of that woman's willingness to worship at the feet of Jesus. He said, your faith saved you. Your sins are forgiven. So since Jesus came into the house, how much praise have you given? Since Jesus came into the house, how much worship have you given? What have you given back to Him this morning? What have you given back to Jesus this morning? Since He came into the house. Since he came into the house. You know, you know another scripture? To know how I know he's here. The Bible says we're two or three gathered together in his name. He said, There I'd be in the midst, right? Amen. There's more than two or three gathered together in his name today. So since Jesus came into the house, what have you done? See, the Bible, the Bible teaches us, admonishes us to bless the Lord. Hmm? Amen. To bless, to bless, to bless the Lord. It's an act of adoration. To kneel down. Mm -hmm. To praise and to thank Him. Huh? To bless the Lord. The Bible really instructs us to, you know, there, there, there are times. We, we desperately seek and we ought to God to bless us. 
But there also comes a time we've got to return the favor. Right. And we've got to bless the Lord. Amen. We've got to bless the Lord. We, you know, we've got to adore Him. We've got to praise Him. We've got to thank Him. We've got to kneel down before Him. Psalms 26 and 12 says this. My foot standeth in an even place. In the congregations will I bless the Lord. In the congregations will I bless the Lord. Well, there was the congregation. Well, in the New, New uh, Testament, if you take the word church and, and, and uh, translate it from the Greek, it means congregation. So if I say, in the church will I bless the Lord. Look at, look at Psalms 34 and 1. Psalms 34 and 1, I will, I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. I'll bless the Lord. Amen. I'll bless the Lord. Psalms 63 and 4. Thus will I bless thee while I live. I will lift my hand in thy name. Anybody lifted their hands to the Lord this morning? Amen. I know some have. Huh? But what have you done since Jesus came in the house? <coughs> Thus I will bless thee while I live. I will lift my hands in thy name. Praise God. Praise God. 66 and 8. Oh, bless our God, ye people. And make the voice of his praise be heard. Huh. Somebody said, Well, I'll just sit here and worship silently. I'll just sit here and worship silently. I you know. That might be okay for a while. You know. Because I'm just not a loud person. Yeah. That's what I tell you, you want a million dollars. <laughs> you see how loud you get. The Bible said, Oh, bless our God, ye people, and make the voice of His praise be heard. Sometimes, sometimes it not only, it benefits it God can hear your silent prayer, and He knows what you're thinking, and He can, but, but every once in a while, God wants you to just turn it loose. Amen. Sometimes my, my voice of praise helps those beside me. Sometimes your voice of praise helps those beside you praise God. Because they're thinking, there's a loud thing, you might well hear me praise. <laughs> so I can go ahead and pray without them hearing me. You know? But he said that the voice of his praise be heard. Paul and Silas, when they were in jail, the Bible said they sang uh, praises at midnight. The Bible said, and the prisoners heard them. They weren't silent about it. What would they do? What would they do? Listen, they had been beaten, put in the stocks, and at midnight they sang praises. What were they doing? They were blessing God. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. You know, they weren't whimpering and whining and saying, Oh, God, get me out of this. They were singing praises unto God. Amen. They were blessing God. Yes, sir. <clears throat> Since Jesus came into the house, since Jesus came into the house. Psalms 96 and 2. Sing unto the Lord, bless His name. Mm -hmm. Show forth His salvation from day to day. Bless Him. Bless Him. Bless Him. Praise God. Praise God. Psalms 103. Verse 1. Bless the Lord. O oh, my soul, and all that is within me. Have you given God your all today? <laughs> Since Jesus came into the house, have you given Him your all? Bless the Lord, O oh, my soul, and all that is within me. Bless His holy name. Bless His holy name. Bless the Lord, O oh, my soul, and forget not all His benefits. Who forgiveth all thine iniquities. 
who healeth all thy diseases, who redeemeth thy life from destruction, who crowneth thee with loving kindness and tender mercies, praise God, who satisfies thy mouth with good things, so that thy youth is renewed like the eagles. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me. It seems some of those that were in that house that day had forgotten some of these benefits they had been given by God. And this woman that was just a sinner came in weeping and crying at the feet of Jesus and began to minister unto him with, with the wiping, washing of his feet and wiping it with her hair and kissing his feet in adoration and anointing him with that precious ointment. He said, Simon, you haven't done any of these things. He said, since I came into the house, you haven't done any of these things. You have none of these things. The Bible says, Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all His benefits. Bless His holy name. Bless His holy name. So, what have you done since Jesus came into the house? What have, what have you done for Him? How have you blessed Jesus since He came into the house? Let's all stand. And that's what I want us to do today before we leave here. Within our soul, within ourselves, I want us to bless God with our praise today. He's loaded us up with benefits. And I told you the other day, sometimes we say, well, I don't feel blessed. I said this, breathe in, breathe out. Amen. Because your next breath belongs to Him. Every breath you take belongs to Him. He breathed into the nostrils of man and man became a living soul. So surely, since Jesus came into the house, what Scripture says, what is man that thou art mindful of Him? Since Jesus came into the house, Amen. what have you done to bless Him? What have you done to bless Him? As they sing, and all that would while they sing, I want you to come around front and just lift up a blessing to God. Just lift up. God, I just want to bless you today for all your blessings only.